All right, welcome to this lecture. Uh, we're going to be talking about orchestration and flow control within uh, Talent Open Studio uh, for data integration. Now, uh, this lecture is a very, uh, very important lecture uh, where we're talking about not just building a single flow uh, that runs, but how can we start taking those flows and putting them together like a, a Lego, uh, like the pieces of the blocks, so that you know we can control how the flow runs. Right, we might have a situation where if a job runs, we want to trigger another job once uh, job A has finished running. Or we might have a situation where we have many, many files that are coming within a directory. And instead of just pointing to one single file to ingest it, you want to iterate through that directory uh, and loop over so we can process every file that happens uh, that is in that directory. Or we might have a situation where we're working with some data sets. At the very end, instead of just putting it into one database, we want to maybe put it into many different databases. The same data spread out to many different databases. So, uh, so all of those who fall under orchestration and flows, and this lecture will dive a little bit deeper and showing us how we can accomplish, accomplish that. Now, we we'll switch over to Studio. And that brings us to uh, our flows. That brings us to our flows uh, within uh, the studio environment. So the first thing that we want to see is I do have a first flow here called master job, and I'm going to be working with this. Uh, before we go into that, let's take a look at what the orchestration piece of talent is. As always, everything is within the uh, palette area. You can always see all the components uh, all grouped in. So here we're talking about orchestration. Uh, let's take a look at some of the components that are available. So T file list. Uh, this is very basic. List all the files to a directory. If you bring that to the screen, you can point to a directory and you can loop through and find all the files that are within that directory. You can even add a file mask to filter for the files that you want to see. So you might want to filter for files that meet a certain condition. Uh, that's what you'll be doing with the T file list. Then that way you can take those files and then process them downstream. Iterate. You might be iterating uh, to, when you list the files, you might iterate through those files. So you have flow to iterate and as well as iterate your flow so this in this case you have a flow you want to iterate over in this case you have an iteration you want to flip that back to a flow so you can use those two uh, depending on, on your needs or in this case you want to do for each uh, so for each file that exists somewhere uh, you want to process that and this one would simply doing a loop condition if you've done any programming uh, you can loop over a for loop or a while loop you can say while this condition i equals zero, i less than ten, i plus plus. So this is your incrementation. Uh, in, uh, you incrementing by this. Uh, you can have some loop conditions as well. Uh, we go down. We have sleep. We talked about. We have uh, replicate. You might have data coming in. You want to replicate that to different sources. So you bring that into your T replicate, and then from here you can output that data to different uh, data sources. So one could be going to an Oracle database. One from here could be going to a MySQL, or one could be going to a flat file. Uh, the same data spread out, replicated to different data sources. We have a sleep, we have wait for file, wait for socket, wait for SQL data. So there's a lot of components here that you can use uh, preliminary for orchestration. We have the pre-job and the post-job. These are components that you use for pre-job. So typically you will have this uh, as a pre-job. And what this would do is, it would you can configure this uh, to bring this to the screen and uh, whatever actions that are linked here will be performed before the job runs and then after the job you want to use a post job component so whatever actions that are tied to this will be performed after the job has finished running so just something that you can use for orchestrating your flows nothing really nothing really fancy but to dive in and start working on a few examples here's what i have here's a situ uh, situation that we're going to be working through uh we have uh, this job one load the two jobs actually customer one customer two so let's take a look at the job very simple jobs one loads customer one loads the data into my sql and creates a table called customer one it uh, similarly customer two loads it creates a table called customer two so if you go into customer two uh, we can see this in the demo database so customer two now we haven't run the job yet let's just verify that we haven't run the job let's actually delete this 
all right so going back here we have customer demo and it's coming uh, from the file and we're writing that to a database so the question is in some situations we might want to have uh, orchestrate this in a way that this once customer one loads we want to immediately load customer two so we want to have like a driver job like a master job that can control uh, and orchestrate these two flows for us so the way we're going to do that is we'll go in here we'll create a new job we'll call it customer driver and the goal for this job is simply to drive uh, uh, to drive and to control how these two other flows are working and once we have that uh, customer drive customer driver I think the name could be different there but once we have that what we can do is go back into orchestration there is a component here called T run job so this component if you can read what it says there it says launches another talent it launches another talent uh, job stored in the project so if you have some other job so in this case i have two other jobs i can use a t run job to run any other talent job that is stored in the project so uh, let's just go to the screen and bring a t run a t run job here t run job right so now we have a t run job what i want to do is i want to run customer one and then run customer two so now that i've brought t run job let's bring two of them so we have uh, two uh, T run jobs. So the first thing I want to do is tell this one to run customer one. So if I come in here, I can select the job. I can go in to my master job. I can say for this one, I can now select the customer one job that I want it to run from, from within uh, talent. So let's go ahead. We select that see now it's gonna run this job i can bring in context variables that whatever context variables are associated with that i want it to run with so and i can put additional parameters next thing i want to come in here i want to have this run customer two right so now we have a job that runs customer one we have a job that runs customer two to load customer two let's actually just change the name here just so it's easy to read. Now we have a job, load customer one, load customer two. And we can link this together. We can say run this. And when you're done, if this is okay, run that. So this is how we can start linking. Imagine you had a really complex flow where you wanna run uh, one job and then run another job is if it's successful and run multiple different jobs You can really begin to use this as part of that orchestration And if you notice it might have gone really fast was I right click from here and I said trigger if this sub job Okay, so if this is okay run that right What I can also do is I can run it if a certain condition has been made so I can do run if a certain condition has been made right so if one Let's just make a very simple condition here. If one equals one, which is always be true, then you can run this. But of course, you can put something more uh, exotic in here, uh, in a better condition to check, so that you know one scenario could be uh, load this file. If this is if you have more than a thousand records in here, so you can put your condition in there and then run this one. If you don't, then then fail. So something like that is something. It's an option that you can also perform. But I'll keep this simple. We have the run if option something that you can definitely use we can trigger on component error so if there's an error you might want to uh, uh execute this and the difference between on component error and on subject uh, error is sub job is an entire flow component is a specific component and i think i talked about that uh, in some earlier uh, the, uh videos so just go back i think probably the first or the second lecture uh definitely covers those but let's keep this simple now we have a very simple uh, simple uh, flow here load customer one load customer two right so if we run this takes a minute uh, to go through
all right so now we have the job that has been successful if we switch back over to studio and do a refresh we should see two new tables that have been created for us in here so we have customer one customer two demo so those are the two tables that have been created and we've accomplished that by simply having a driver job that calls and orchestrates two other workflows using the t sub job so something very uh very uh very powerful uh to use and to have under your tool belt right you can be trying to replicate data you want to use the t replicate unite you could use the t in unite so the orchestration flow here is a very powerful and versatile part of talent uh open studio that you should be definitely familiar with it's gonna really help really really help once you start going beyond building very basic flows into building more complex flows and being able to use that to orchestrate so imagine a situation where i had 10 jobs and i needed to orchestrate them and call them one after each other definitely using a t uh, run job is what you want to be doing and there are ways and this is a little bit more advanced there are ways where you can have context variables where you're passing it from your driver job down to your sub job or vice versa but that's a little bit more of an uh, an advanced topic but if that situation comes into play definitely go to help the talent.com to see how um how that, that has been done or find a community forum to post those questions there and i think someone should be able to uh, give you some tips and guidance on how to do that all right so this brings us to uh, a summary and a recap of what we just talked about here which is uh, flows that are available within talent uh, we can create master jobs uh, we, we understand the different types of uh, uh, connections on component okay sub job okay uh, we can uh, do loops iterations there are components for that if you want to loop through files in the directory you can just pull those components that are available uh, for that to perform the looping so hope this uh, helps hope this gives you some good confidence to go out and be able to not just build flows but to think about how you can start orchestrating those flows in very interesting ways so if flow a runs and then it's successful you want to run flow b or flow c and really get uh, get um, get fancy with it now the next piece the next lecture would uh, just talk a little bit about um, apis we're not going to spend a lot of time here but we'll give you some ideas and some tips on on how to integrate with apis some sample apis that are out there and how you can leverage talent uh for all of that talent open studio uh, for all of that which you which you didn't need as we see that apis are becoming really popular these days so being able to integrate to api is something that uh, you should be uh, definitely familiar with and we're going to cover that in the next lecture thank you <music>